here. 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 And here. Now NIST tells us that these are puffs of air being produced by the collapsing building pushing air down the hoistway like a piston. It's got to come out somewhere, right? Well, first of all, these are not puffs of air. They're pulverized building materials. And they occur at 160 to 200 feet, some of them, per second. These velocities are propelled by explosives. 20, 40, and 60 stories below. How can the piston be producing all of that? And in, in fact, there, there are these focalized ejections that occur halfway between the corners of the building. Also, if say this was the open office spa space, right, 60 feet long. The elevator hoistways over here. The, the piston's going to shove the air into this room. It's going to fill an, the, the room fairly uniformly with air pressure before it breaks any windows, right? And then it might break several, but not these highly focalized, uh, pinpoint accurate, uh, geometrically precise, violent ejections. Do we have a near freefall pace through the path of greatest resistance? Let's take a look. Galileo's law of falling bodies calculates the time in which an object will travel a certain distance in complete freefall. Distance, d, equals 16.8 times time in seconds squared. The South Tower was 1,362 feet tall. 1362 equals 16.08 times 84.7, or 9.2 seconds. The Twin Towers came down in nearly free fall speed. What are we talking about here? Let's just try to put this in perspective with this story problem. We have a 15-story building which we hold with this crane over 95 stories of nothing but air. No resistance, right? Just air resist. Next to it, another 15-story building held over a 95-story building with, say, 80,000 tons of structural steel in it. Now we're going to pull the lever on these cranes and drop them both at once. I brought a 95-story building with me today. And we're going to just test this theory of NIST's. I've got two 15-story buildings. We've got 80,000 tons of structural steel in this one right here. And we've got air resistance here. So let's try it, okay? We'll put them both up here. We'll even give a little bit of impact load, too, okay? Ready? Three, two, one. Oh my God, the one without any resistance under it hit the ground first at virtually free fall speed. This doesn't take much, does it? What happened over here? The, the building above was, it met resistance. Through the, process, the energy of deformation, it came to a halt. Where is the 15-story building that was driving this building down to the ground at free fall speed? In the first two seconds, you saw it reduce half of its mass. It was blown outside. It couldn't have been used to influence the downward progression of the building. In the next two seconds, after four seconds totally, it's destroyed itself. There's nothing crushing the building. It's tearing itself apart at free fall speed. And it's dismembering the steel structure. In fact, the leading edge of these mushroom clouds are full of perimeter columns, aluminum cladding, and other steel. Let's take a look at the South Tower in terms of dismemberment. See what's going on here. South Tower's on your left. It was hit lower by the aircraft. And as you can see, it's, its rapid destruction starts there, and it begins to tilt to the left. And it disappears into this cloud. 
we would expect to see this building, which is already tilted at 22 degrees and continuing its angular momentum, off-center of the building below it. How can it crush it symmetrically at free-fall speed when it's already off-center? We don't see it either mangled up in some heap at the bottom uh, down on the pavement. It's been completely dismembered. Let's take a look from below, though. We have asymmetrical damage, and yet there's this symmetrical destruction occurring underneath the cloud all the way around the building like the firemen saw, even though this top mass has already fallen over. Free fall speed. Doesn't make sense to me. Steel frame structure was completely dismembered. There are no large chunks of building, only those shards that we saw of the perimeter structure. Does it look like a gravitational collapse to you? Do we have a lateral ejection of structural steel? Let's take a look. Now let's look at the collapse of the Twin Towers. We are seeing explosions rather than implosions, a first in demolition history. A sequenced rumble becomes a roar as debris is thrown outward. The damage is not contained. Windows are blown from neighborhood buildings. What kind of energy enabled this? Would fire hurl metal and concrete sideways into the air? Here, a chunk of steel was flung 400 feet, wedging itself deep into Three World Financial Center on Vesey Street. A FEMA photographer taking pictures of Ground Zero wondered why so many steel beams were jutting from neighborhood buildings. What shot pieces of the towers all the way across the street? In fact, the portions of the tower that had the greatest structural members, the sky lobbies and the mechanical floors, had the perimeter units thrown farther than the perimeter wall units from the upper floors, which theoretically should have, because they're higher, they should have gone farther, right? No, these perimeter units landed on the winter garden 600 feet away. What about those floors, those pancakes? We're, we're, this is a pancake collapse. We're looking for some pancakes down below. This is a seven-story lobby. There's about two or three stories of stuff in there. We'll take a look at that stuff, but what I'm looking for is 110 floors with this kind of metal decking underneath four and five inches thick of concrete. An acre in size, each of them. 110 acres of these. How many floors do we find down at the bottom? Not 50, not 10, not even one. We don't even find metal decking down there or concrete. There's hardly any macroscopic chunks of concrete. What happened to the metal decking? What happened to the concrete? Pancakes occur in pancake collapses. Enormous pyroclastic clouds of pulverized concrete? Well, where is all the concrete, in fact? And you see, and there's no concrete. There's very little concrete. All you see is aluminum and steel. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized. And I was down here Tuesday, and it was like you were on a foreign planet. All of lower Manhattan, not just this site, from river to river, there was dust powder two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. And how about this firefighter? You have two 110-story office buildings. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad, and it was about this big. The building collapsed to dust. And this dust made it almost across to New Jersey, across the river. Uh, thick, billowing, laying a carpet of four to six inches thick around lower Manhattan, uh, pulverized to uh, 100 micron to, to 10 mil particles.